Thanks, Tracy. And uh, firstly, thank you very much for putting uh, the conference on. But I'll talk about Browns Range. Um, this is uh, after seven years. I'm proud to say that uh, those trucks are about to hit our site. Um, we're going to start mining on the 1st of June. So after seven years of our initial discovery, we're actually going to start mining at Browns Range. Um, in 2018, we're actually going to be supplying heavy rare earths to the market. So uh, it's been a great achievement. Um, one thing I, I realised was that sometimes when you talk about heavy rare earths, um, some people try to work out what have you got. And this is just a simple pie chart. I know we've got a mandarin pole at the back um, representing Linus. Um, what, what they have, we don't, and vice versa. So they're very dominant in NDPR. Um, and in our deposit, um, we're very dominant in dysprosium and terbium. So we've got a very rich and healthy um, heavy rare earth deposit. Again, uh, after seven years, it's nice to have these uh, pictures up. They're, they're ugly pictures from a technical perspective, but um, we've actually taken the topsoil off two of our deposits that we'll be mining from the 1st of June. So on the right-hand side is Gambit West, and on the left, bottom left-hand side is Wolverine. In our large-scale operation, Wolverine will actually um, deliver about 75% of our full life of uh, project ore. Um, but for the pilot plant, and our definition of pilot plant is very different to what some people have been talking about. Um, we're going to be um, building a pilot plant that's 10% the size of our full-scale operation. So the front end of the plant will be 60,000 tonnes per annum, and we'll be producing 573 tonnes of contained TREO and a mixed rare earth carbonate. Why are we doing this? Well, the full-scale operation is a uh, $329 million build and probably somewhere between four to $500 million of financing. And all the numbers I talk about are in Australian dollars. Our market cap in 2015 was about 30 to $40 million. So it was almost impossible to consider how could we possibly finance that given the, uh, the current prices of rare earths. So do we sit on our backsides? What do we do to take this project forward? And again, what's really critical is about convincing the market of a new supply source. Um, our, our ore is hosted in a Zenitime. It's different to the ionic clays that currently deliver heavy rare earths into the market. So we came up to the conclusion that we'd change the way in which we'd go about, um, uh, we'd go and develop this project. Just quickly, I won't mention any words that uh, um, some have done before us, but more importantly, I think we've got to look at what the Chinese are doing and uh, how many vehicles and units they're putting out. And I think that's significantly more than what we're talking about in some of the other countries around the world that produce EVs. There's uh, the supply and demand dynamics. Um, again, one of the challenges we face is what are the numbers? Um, so uh, the supply of heavy rare earths all come from, or well, significantly come from China. Um, and then we hear about this illegal mining and there's a number of definitions within that illegal mining. So you've got some companies who have got licences to extract the rare earths, but they exceed their quotas. And then you've also got a cottage market where you've got people that are taking um, wheelbarrows and, and grabbing a tonne of, uh, of rock and, and separating it at their homes, if you like. Um, so it's very difficult to really uh, analyse the, uh, the supply um, and the demand um, is defined with the uh, drive forward of the EV uh, demand. Uh, there's a gap. In the red is what we'll be delivering from our pilot plant then full scale operation. So what you can see there, there will be a need to have more than one Browns range in production. Price. Uh, price sits at the moment about 182 US dollars a kilo for dysprosium. Um, forecasters there have it sort of going anywhere up to $325. People in the magnet industry have talked about back calculating what they can afford of dysprosium going into a permanent magnet um, and that's about 700 US a kilo. Now, what we um, suffered in 2011 was this absolutely outrageous price that, uh, you know, dysprosium went to $4,000 a kilo. And uh, again, today I hear about people talking about price inelasticity. I think we should add the terms price inelasticity within a relevant range, because at $4,000 a kilo, it had a direct impact on the, the end price of a, a vehicle, if you like. So. There is a price that all participants in the supply chain can actually win. And so, um, 
you know, we'd be very happy at somewhere anywhere up to 700 US a kilo, definitely higher than what it is today. So we're positioned for success. What a beautiful picture. So we're located in the northern part of Western Australia. Our project straddles the WA Northern Territory border. Um, and we also have two other projects. All of them are Xenotime, Xenotime hosted heavy rare earth projects. So on the 18th of April this year, the board approved the project to go ahead. It's 10% of the scale of the, of the full operation. Now, one thing when you go to a smaller scale operation is you lose economies of scale. We've offset that with two things. The ore at the top 30 to 50 metres of our ore body is actually 70% higher than the average run of mine grade for the full project. So that has a significant benefit to the project. And secondly, we will benefit from getting cash back from the research and development grants that the Australian Federal Government give. So 43.5 cents in the dollar comes back to us from our capex and opex. And I heard, I think, in the early panel today, what are people getting and receiving from, from governments, if you like. Northern Minerals has received $23.6 million to date from, the, from our federal government's R&D uh, scheme uh, as part of uh, the work we've done. I mean, to date, Northern Minerals has spent nearly $100 million on exploration and developing the project where, is it, where it is today. And you, you do get scared about what the size of these markets are and how much investment you've actually got to do to take these into production. Following our three-year pilot plant, we'll uh, refine our DFS and then um, assuming all is well and prices are stronger, we'll plan to build our full-scale operation. I've just explained why a continuous pilot plant it's so critical in the industrial mineral space is to deliver product to market on spec. I mean, you can do it in a lab or a small scale pilot plant and get the confidence of your off takers, but nothing beats actually putting relevant amounts of product into the market. And that's what we'll be doing as part of our pilot plant. Financing, um, we've had to think seriously outside the box because as again, one of the guys at the panels earlier talked about um, investment bankers going and, and the like. Um, we've had to really think outside the box to work out how we're going to fund this project. Um, we're doing it through a number of uh, elements, $29.5 million through traditional equity placements, $32 million via an R&D financing facility. So um, when you put in your tax return in Australia, we, we run a July to June tax year, um, you get your cash back as part of that process. We'll be putting in a, a, um, a, a debt factoring facility so that that helps our cash flow getting away from a lumpy once a year refund from the government. $10 million via a sales agreement prepayment. Um, I've had people tell us that uh, rare earths are no longer required. Well, we did have someone that's going to give us money before we start uh, producing, so they obviously need our product. And also Sino Steel are our EPC contractor who are giving us a 20% deferred payment. Both those last two items can be converted into equity. Uh, that didn't add up to 56 because we've got to overshoot and uh, make sure we don't have uh, any issues. Our sales agreement uh, is secured with a group called JF Mag, um, so we actually have a China strategy. Um, my job is actually not the MD of uh, UNICEF or World Peace. Um, I've got to actually make sure we return money for shareholders. And so our Japanese friends who we announced an MOU with uh, earlier in the year just didn't come up to the mark about offering us the things we needed to get the project up. So, you know, we've got to go and get the best value for shareholders. The offtake is for 100% of all the product we produce from our pilot plant and there is no, um, there is no um, first right of refusal or anything like that for the full scale operation. So it's game on for the full scale operation. Uh, JF Mag is a subsidiary of Guangdong Rare Earths Group which is one of the five um, players in, in the rare earth, heavy rare earth space in China and they are owned by a company called Guangdong Rising Asset Management who have been very active in the Australian market and they recently uh, acquired a project a company called Panos for $1.4 billion, so well known to the Australian market. Uh, we'll be based off uh, Asia Metals and uh, the Rudo uh, uh, Bureau's pricing um, to determine what our price will be for our product uh, sold. Uh, we'll be shipping it out of either Darwin or, or Wyndham and it'll be going to Langong, which is a port about 400 kilometres north of Shanghai. Uh, our process plant, Crush grind, magnetic separation, float, produces enotime concentrate, sulfation bake, precipitate, um, and then produce a 52% carbonate. 
Um, it'll be open, open pit. Oh, sorry, the last one, uh, the pilot plant's $39 million, and uh, that has already started to be constructed, fabricated in China as we speak. Open pit mining, $6 million. Because of how remote we are, we're going to mine the whole three years in one hit. So the, the, the guys will roll up on the 1st of June and leave by 30 November, and we'll be mining 180,000 tonnes, $6 million contract. Um, the camp is now uh, nearly in complete construct. Um, I presented in China on Friday and I had to tell people that the, the local community was as big as the amount of delegates at the conference. And you can imagine people in China can't actually comprehend how such a small community exists um, in that part of the world. They'd probably have about three million people there. Um, Tailings Dam um, construct. So final investment decision's been made. The fabrication started. Bulk mining will happen in about 14 days time. Installation will happen between September and April uh, next year and commissioning research development for three months and we plan to start producing uh, July 2018. Pretty pictures of all the great guys. One thing for us in terms of, uh, we've had continuity. I've been there for seven years since Discovery. Robin Wilson's been there for 11 years. Um, we've had a team that's been there through the journey which has helped us with native title discussions and many other facets of the business. Um, our, our dome is 60 kilometres by 30 kilometres. Um, we've got a massive um, prospect area. We've only drilled 10 prospects. We converted six of those into dual compliant resource reserves. Our geologists have identified a further 170 new targets. So whilst we've only got 11 year mine life, We've got a, a further nine years that we've defined under the JORC code, so that gives you 20, but we've got a massive upside here. And we've got John Galt, which has got higher grade, which is about 150 kilometres further north, and we've got Boulder Ridge to the south of us, so we've really taken a position in this area. Over, over Christmas, we raised money at a 91% premium. It was probably the best capital raise on the Australian Stock Exchange, um, so um, not a bad effort. A lot of brokers don't like us when you raise money at those premiums. Um, completing the balance of the 10 million placement, we've gone through all those other items there. And uh, capital structure, $86 million, um, dominated by Chinese on our share register. Without the Chinese, I'd be talking about rock chips and standing here and talking about a dream. Um, they've, they've helped us fund this project to get where it is today, and I thank them greatly. Um, but Whilst we're dominated by Chinese investors, um, the board still um, dictates the business plan and the way forward. And if you have a look at the business plans we've run over the last seven years, they've never been impacted by major shareholders. They believe in what we think is the right way to commercialise this project. And uh, we're, it's a bit of a dream, building an Australian greenfield discovery. So very rarely do you get an opportunity to be part of actually discovering a project seven years ago in terms of taking a rock chip um, to now mining it in two weeks and producing in July next year. So thank you very much.